G'day everyone. Uh, I've seen a really interesting article, uh, well it was yesterday, it was posted in my photography and videography school, uh, talking about that Sony are bringing out a couple of new amazing sensors, well they appear that they're going to be amazing, uh, and the video side of thing, they're both going to be capable of 8K video. I will summarise this up at the end, so you know we'll have a bit of a discussion about that, and I'd like you also to put some discussion down below as well. Uh, and we can sort of continue that going in the coming days. But the article itself is shared on EOS HD. Um, this is the site here. I'll put this in the link down below so you can have a look at it. So they're saying the A7R4, A7S3, the A92 to feature 8K video as new 60 megapixel and 36 megapixel full frame uh, sensor specs leak. And this is the really interesting and they've put down here on their 8K video is coming. Uh, and like I said, I will summarise this up at the end myself for you guys. Uh, but they're saying that Sony has developed this Duo 8K capable full frame sensors. Now there's going to be two of them, but they're saying they, they might mean that they're in the upcoming A7S 3 and the A9 II. Only one of these will feature the high resolution 8K 36 megapixel sensor, which probably will be the A7S 3 uh, And then uh, the 60 megapixel sensor is going to be in the A7R4 uh, and it's really interesting. They're also saying that they're going to make these sensors available to someone else. Now whether Sony will hold back a little bit on those sensors to not open it up completely, uh, we, we still have to wait and see. But they're saying the sensor could see its way into the full frame Panasonic uh, GH or SH cameras. Um, and so that's, that's really uh, cool too. Uh, they're also saying officially 8K video weighs in at 7680 by 4320. Um, That's the size of the um, megapixels on that camera, and I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the first 8K TVs are on the market now. Um, Samsung QLEDs and cameras are next. Uh, Sony is known to have developed the 60 megapixel and 30 megapixel sensors. Those eagle eyed uh, uh, enough would have spotted that in Sony Alpha rumors. Now, that document is actually this one here and like I said I'll put this also in the link down below uh, and you can sort of see that they're 10 bits, uh, 16 bit I should say um, sensors, uh, they are 7380 by 7730 in resolution, uh, I mean 7380 by 4932 uh, sensors, they are a 32 sensor but it will crop down to a 169, I believe that's how they work. Um, so, and that's basically it, if you're looking at that. Uh, there is some other uh, interesting things that you can read down here, but like I said, I'll put that down below, because they're talking about uh, the weighted pixel binning, uh, improves image quality overall, new dual gain ADC mode. Now, they're saying that's already uh, known to be in the X-T3 sensor already, and it's also got this HDR technology, which is like bracketing. Uh, it takes two frames almost at the same time, uh, with saying a minimal time interval is only one six thousandth of a second, so it's very fast. Uh, so these two sensors obviously are going to be um, popping up fairly soon. Um, what else are we saying in here? Another thing they're saying, um, it's likely the uh, lower, uh, I think it's saying here actually, that um, it's they are 3.2 uh, and 16.9, 3.2 for stills. Uh, and it's 7380 uh, 4932. The total resolution is that resolution there. Uh, the sensor is likely destined for either the A7S3 or a promo model, pro model such as the A92. Um, they're saying the 60 megapixel one obviously is for the A7R4. Like I said, I don't want to read this too much. Uh, but a couple of interesting things though down here though, it's actually saying although it isn't clear whether Sony image processor is capable of the full 8K 60p, uh, or cap it at 8K 30p, they're actually saying that you may be able to get up to um, 300 frames per second on this, uh, which would be amazing if you're dealing with slow motion and things like that. But they're saying it's probably going to be capped at 240 to 250 frames per second in camera. Now, whether that's uh, 4K, 8K, or 1080p, we'll, we'll just have to wait and see what they give us uh, in that sensor. But it looks like it's going to be incredible. Um, what we'll actually get from this. Uh, they're saying that dropping from um, the 36 megapixel sensor also has a 16-bit AD converter, 
but is able to go to 10 frames per second for stills at the top color depth, which is incredible. Dropping to 12-bit enables 8K video up to 30p on both sensors. A further drop to 10-bit is necessary to enable the high frame rates. So it looks like, yes, it is at 1080p that you're getting 300 uh, frames per second, but you are going to get 8K 60 according to this, which is unbelievable. Um, anyway, let's have a look too at what why this is important because there's a couple of really interesting things here. Now, I know a lot of people turn around and say that you don't even need um, the 4K or which is 6K down sample to 4K on the Sony cameras like the A9 and the A7 III. Uh, but I love shooting if I can in 4K because what it does, I don't really need it to display that at this stage because not many people are viewing 4K footage at this stage. It will happen in the future, but I mostly use it so it gives me enough room to crop in because it means that I can use one camera and then continuously crop in on that image. And that really is a, a fantastic feature for me to be able to do that. Also, if you're adding stabilization and things like that, it gives you that ability to crop that size a little bit to put the uh, stabilization in post, which is another great feature as well. Uh, and also, it's much sharper, or the image you get is much sharper if you record in 4K and then you down sample to 1080p. And you'll probably find the same thing will happen with 8K. If you record at 8K and then you down sample it to 4K, you'll probably get a much uh, better result as well. So there are interesting things there uh, as well. But the main thing here that I believe is probably going to be the biggest change here is that if you're doing this for stills, if you shoot video at 8K, you can get roughly a 30, I think it's a 34 or a 36 megapixel still out of that uh, frame. Now, a lot of people are going to say, yes, but you have to use a, a low shutter speed to get the best result for video. Well, I've found that's true, but often I'm shooting at 60p. Uh, due to the fact that I like to slow that down and I'm getting beautiful results with that. And sometimes I crank the shutter, if I'm not using an ND, I'll often crank the shutter way up. So for what I'm doing and the type of work that I'm doing, I could quite easily be shooting at 1 25th of a second and still get really lovely video, but also be able to pull stills out of that video as well. And that's one of the real strong points of moving up to an 8K. There are downsides and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. But that's one of the real uh, benefits of shooting this 8K is that you can pull that file out of there. And I used to do it quite successfully with the GH5 when I had that and get really quite usable results. You can't use flash, yes, but nowadays continuous lights are coming more and more into uh, the, the full-time photographer's arsenal. I use um, continuous lights now all the time. Now it's not gonna be over, able to overpower the sun, yes. So there are gonna be inst instances where you're still gonna have to use uh, strobes to overpower the sun. But if you're dealing with a lot of work where you're not trying to overpower the sun, you're just trying to add a little bit of fill here there, or there. You, you, you're doing things uh, at the end of the day where the light's gone down and you can start to use continuous lights. There's no reason why you can't get unbelievable work from these 8K 8, 8 uh, videos. So what you'll be doing is you'll just be shooting continuously and then dragging frames off. Now, I read an interesting article talking about this that this morning. Uh, it's actually here. And this was on uh, Digital Rev, and there's a whole article here that I'll post down below as well, that we're discussing some of the uh, benefits that you could do uh, with grabbing stills from video, which is like grabbing that perfect frame that you just couldn't get any other way. You really can call a record for, say, uh, 15 seconds and then pull out that amazing file. That's one of the advantages with the A9. When you're shooting 20 frames per second, you just don't miss that moment. So this is one of the great things that they're talking about being able to do that. Uh, and they're talking about uh, cons and pros from this. They're saying it gives a 32 megapixel still image if you're dealing with 8K video, which like I said, is more than enough for what you would want to do. And it does have huge implications to the uh, photography industry uh, particularly. And they're saying here that the ability to choose any frame in a series is especially uh, useful when uh, shooting with a large sensor. Um, and you can be rolling the entire time and then basically isolate every, uh, isolate every single frame and choose the frame that you want. Uh, I just wanted to talk to you about a couple of um, the uh, cons and pros, uh, but they're saying here that I mentioned just a minute ago that a con is strobe photography might not have such a place in the world dominated by video. And like I said, it really isn't relevant unless you're trying to overpower the sun. 
or trying to, uh, to use the flash to stop motion. Uh, so there are areas where you will still have flash, obviously, all the time. But a lot of the time, if you're dealing with, uh, you know, like in the evening and things like that, it would be fantastic just using continuous lights. Um, another big pro, though, or, or con, is that you're going to have to... 8K footage requires a massive amount of storage. And it actually says down here that 8K video requires about 15 to 18 terabytes of storage for 90 minutes of video. So your storage requirements are really high if you're dealing with 8K video footage. So that's one thing that you do have to understand. You're also going to have to have a computer that's powerful enough to actually uh, process this type of information as well. So you are going to have to have a quite a high end of machine and you're going to have to have massive amounts of storage as well uh, to work through these uh, files as well. You are guaranteed to get a good frame though, that's one of the advantages on it. You're not going to miss that first kiss uh, because you're going to be continuously um, uh, shooting that footage. There's all there's Red Weapon 8Ks now that can capture 8K motion footage as well as 36 megapixel stills. Uh, so that technology is already there and obviously uh, it's going to now filter down into cameras like what Sony are offering due to that sensor that's actually coming out. So it, it's going to be amazing. That the one of the things also you're going to have to learn to be basically a videographer though. So that's one thing you are going to have to try and uh, learn on is to learn the audio video side of things. And I've said this all along to the people subscribing to me that I do think that's the future. And in the future, this is probably definitely the way that I believe it is going to go. Uh, so it is going to mean that you're going to have to learn other skills. Um, I'm just checking further down here to see if um, anything else. Um, and that's about it really, because I'll just put these um, things uh, in the comment below. It just says, in conclusion, pulling from a still from rolling footage may make it easier for you to capture that perfect moment you're looking for. But it's very different skill set for, to photography as we know it. And that's the thing, it is a different skill set. So this is a really interesting, uh, I think it's a really interesting way that the, the, the industry is going to go. Like I've said to you all along that I do believe fusion, which is a mix of video and stills, is the future. And I've said that all along. I have prided myself on being a little bit ahead all the time in uh, technology. And I think this is definitely the next step that's going to actually happen. Uh, I know a lot of photographers that don't want to move, that are going to have blinkers on, are going to be probably terrified by this and say this is never going to happen. Well, I do believe this is going to happen. And I do believe this is something that you're going to have to get to in the very near future, within the next five years. So my suggestion to you all is to embrace this. Obviously learn the skills that you need for photography because that's still a, a, a something that you do need and this is the same for videographers. If you're a videographer you are going to have to learn the still side of things as well. But you are going to be able to pull that perfect moment out of the video. It might not be long that we're not taking that single still anymore. Now I'd love to know what you think about this in the comment box down below. Um, and uh, we can keep this discussion going there. Uh, that's all for now. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.